The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. Jesus is saying, when things wax worse and worse, you know that I'm on the way. So we know when Christ is coming. Just look at what's taking place. Now see, it's, it's difficult, I notice it's difficult where we are in America to really see what's happening because like we've been so blinded and, and, and I must tell you this, that Hollywood has done a great job at fooling people. I believe that whole industry is just something that the devil has used to desensitize the people of God to spiritual warfare. They have made witchcraft blockbusters. They have made divination comical. They have literally made um, idolatry normality. Do you realize how when this Old Testament speaks of idols and we look at it today, we will be like, oh, ain't nobody bowing down to no statue. Nobody doing that, right? They came up with a concept, American Idol. No, you may think I'm joking, but I need you to hear this. People then vote for the person they want to become an idol. We've now taken the term and made it song so passive that, oh, all you're doing is voting for someone to be a famous star. Wait a minute, but aren't angels the stars of God? Isn't there a falling star called Lucifer who came to lead people astray? And isn't he the ruler of this world? Wait a minute, isn't an idol always something that's bad? So how did we make a bad thing good and now we're doing exactly what Romans chapter 1 said, we're worshiping created things and we don't even see it. This is why we, watch this, have posters of human beings on our walls and calling them our superstars. Basketball players and baseball players and football players and singers and movie stars. Oh, so we've elevated these people to a place we don't even have the word of God on our walls, but we have pictures of people. Because we don't even know what idols are because Satan has dumbed down our minds. So we become so inculcated with the culture that we can't even tell what Satanism is. So we have Christians talking about, I'm a Taurus and I'm a Cancer and I'm a Sagittarius. I'm like, you a what? All those things are demonic forces. See, we've become so desensitized because what Satan is going to do during this time is make the worship of him normality. So what we're seeing right now is a subtle move to satanic worship. This is why the first thing you have to do is destroy, watch this, destroy the Imago Dei. Because when you destroy the image of God, there is no God now for you to worship except you. So what we're seeing now is a self-worship in culture. Notice how everyone is saying, well, you can't say anything that would offend me, but they're saying things to offend you. And what they're saying is, I love my sin. You speak against my sin, you're speaking against who I am. And now we've relegated sin that where we're placing into law certain sin categories and calling sin now human rights. So what we've done is we've completely changed the concept of how God has created his natural order to something that is unnatural. Again, think about it. In order for Satan to come and take over, there must be a destruction or a complete removal of any true religion. And that's what's taking place. We see it happening. These are the signs, these are the birth pains. So Jesus began in verse nine of chapter 24, and he says, then, and he used the word then, and that's interesting. Then they will deliver you to tribulation and will kill you and you will be hated by all the nations because of my name. Let me just break it down. If you are trying to be friends with people who are living an immoral, perverted life, who could care less about God, you become an enemy of God. Friendship with the world is enmity towards God. It's hostility towards God. See, so we can believe that we can be friends because it sounds so good in this passive Christian era where the whole thing is not to offend people, but we can offend God. Don't say hard things because you might hurt someone's feelings, but you completely annihilate the holiness of God. Oh, you can't say that because that's offensive and completely remove reverence of God. So you can come as you are in the church, but you cannot come as you are in the world. Think about that. 
The church is the only place where they say, okay, welcome everyone in their sin. They can do whatever they want to do. The world says, no, you have to sin for us to accept you. In other words, they will not tolerate you having a standard of holiness, but the church will tolerate their foolishness. And, 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 here's, and, and here's the trick from the devil. People in the church says that's love. You love people when you just sit there in agreement with them. Are you saying something? No, you agree. So Paul is speaking to the church at Rome in Romans chapter one, and there is something interesting he said concerning unbelief. But he comes in verse 32 of Romans chapter one. He says, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things, okay, practice what things? Let me just go here. I'm just gonna read it, verse 21. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God and give thanks. But they became futile in their speculations and their foolish hearts was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. They exchanged the glory of the incorruptible God for an image in the form of corruptible man and of birds and of four-footed animals and crawling creatures. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity that their bodies might be dishonored among them. For they exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And they worship and serve the create the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever amen for this reason god gave them over to degrading passions for the women exchanged the natural functions for that which is unnatural and in the same way also the man abandoned the natural function of the woman and burn in their desires towards one another man with men committing indecent acts and receiving in their own person the due penalty of their error and just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God any longer God gave them over to a depraved mind to do those things which are not proper being filled with unrighteousness and wickedness and greed and evil and envy and murder and strife, deceit and malice and gossip, slanderers and haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, without understanding, untrustworthy, unloving, unmerciful, and although they know the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but they also give hearty approval to those who practice them give approval to someone practicing in sin is for you yourself to be committing that sin the standard of god has not changed god still requires holiness he still requires for us to be set apart he still requires for us to be his living vessels that that hasn't changed in the last days perilous times shall come for men shall be lovers of their own selves covetous boasters proud blasphemers it takes the grace of God to change us folks how can you be saved if you're not willing to repent and the Lord Jesus Christ said except you repent you shall all likewise perish